What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today we got a reaction to Take That, their top 10 songs brought to you by a friend, longtime supporter and patron of the channel, Richard. Thank you, Richard. We appreciate you. We appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. We could not do this channel without them. So if you'd like to support us in any way, we super appreciate it. Check out the Patreon link below or the Patreon link on the end screen. And we do have a free trial going on right now, so you can just check it out. All right, let's jump into this thing. Now, I'm going to tell you right now from the United States, right? And so... I've heard of Take That. I know nothing about them, which after I dove really deep into the research, I knew they were big, you know, basically everywhere else and huge in the UK. And I knew Robbie Williams came from them because I discovered Robbie Williams' Escapeology CD in the early 2000s. I absolutely loved it, man. We spun that on repeat, but Robbie just never made it bigger as a solo artist. So I knew he came from Take That. My research tells me they did have one top 10 song here, which maybe I'll know uh, if it's on this list. But I don't know anything about them. So I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you do. But I'm going to tell you a little bit about Take That. So Richard tells us, a boy band that started in the early 90s who evolved into a band with some really good pop songs going into the 2000s. Robbie Williams left the band to pursue his highly successful solo career. Gary Barlow has shown over the years he's a very talented songwriter. I'll give you some background on Take That are an English pop group formed in Manchester in 1990. The group currently consists of Gary Barlow, Howard Donald, and Mark Owen. The original lineup also featured Jason Orange and, of course, the aforementioned Robbie Williams. Barlow is the group's lead singer and primary songwriter, with Owen and Williams initially providing backup vocals, and Donald and Orange primarily serving as dancers. They made a lot of money if they were just serving as dancers for a little while, right? This is astounding chart success in the UK. It just is. The group had 28 top 40 singles, 20 top 10, and 17 top 5s on the UK singles chart, 12 of which have reached number 1. They also have 9 albums that went to number 1 on the UK album chart. Internationally, they've had 56 number one singles, 42 number one albums. They've received eight British awards, winning for Best British Group and Best British Live Act. In 2012, they received the Novell Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music. According to the BPI that tracks this stuff in Britain, their certified sales of 15 million albums and 12 million singles in the UK. That's insane. Now, Robbie left the band in 1995 while the four remaining members completed their world tour and released a final single before splitting up in 1996. After filming a 2005 Take That for the record about the group and releasing a new Greatest Hits album, a four-piece Take That without Robbie officially announced a 2006 reunion tour around the UK entitled The Ultimate Tour. On May 9, 2006, it was announced that the group were set to record new material together once again. Their fourth studio album, Beautiful World, was released in 2006 and was followed up with The Circus in 2008. The group achieved new success as a four-piece, scoring a string of chart hits across the UK and Europe while selling over 45 million records worldwide. Williams rejoined Take That in 2010 for the band's sixth album, Progress. Released on November 15th of that year, it was the first album of new material to feature Take That's original lineup since their 1995 album, Nobody Else became the fastest selling album in the 21st century and the second fastest selling album in British history. In 2014, they recorded a seventh studio album, this time as a trio without Williams and Orange. The album entitled Three was released in November 2014 and became the band's seventh number one. It was preceded by the single These Days, which became the band's 12th number one single in the UK. It's just insane, right? All these years later, usually when groups get back together, bring new material as it goes on. They're not nearly as successful. Somehow they were able to just elevate it. In 2011, they set the record for the fastest selling tour of all time in the UK with Progress Live, beating their previous record just two years later or earlier for Circus Live in 2009. At the 2011 Brit Awards, they won Best British Group. In 2012, Forbes named them the fifth highest earning music stars in the world. In that same year, the official charts company revealed the biggest selling singles artists in British hist chart history would take that placing 15th overall, making them the most successful boy band in UK chart history. Four of their albums are listed in the best albums of the millennium, with three of them among the 60 best selling albums in UK chart history. I just had to bring you all the fire because if for some reason you don't know this, if you're like me and you're from the United States and you're just checking this out because you watch the videos on this channel, like these guys are massive, massive. It's just really insane. I can't think, I'm sure there's examples, but I can't think of another act that was this massive in the UK that never really had any success in the US, right? I, I come across artists plenty of times on this channel, thanks to the patrons who are like, oh, I didn't know this artist existed. And I see that they had a lot of success in the UK and they're really good, but this is a different level of success, right? So I don't I don't know if it was too crowded, 
with the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC and, you know, all the all the boy bands in, in the U.S. And so they just didn't try to push take that. I don't know, but it's a it's a weird thing. So if you haven't been with us before, the music will not be in the video, but it's going to be at a Vimeo link below. So click there and follow along with us. Let's jump into it. And at number 10, we got Never Forget from the Nobody Else album in 1995, which was their third studio album. Went to number one in the UK, their seventh number one single at that time. Robbie left the band during the promotion of this song. It was written by Gary Barlow and sung mostly by Howard Donald. Robbie does have a short solo section in the middle of the song. His vocals are also featured before the final chorus. Now, there's a remix single version, and there's a couple of these songs that we are going to do the singles version of, but it's not this one, right? But Jim Steinman, the great Jim Steinman, remixed the single to rave reviews. In 2018, the song was ranked 71 by Billboard critics in the compilation of the 100 Greatest Boy Band Songs of All Time. The song's chorus is also played during rugby games at Twickenham Stadium when England scores a penalty kick or conversion. And then at the coronation for King Charles III and Queen Camilla, Take That performed this song as a three-piece to close the concert. So, uh, yeah, uh, major, major uh, acclaim here. So I'm going to have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, Richard. I'd never forget a well-written song that they reminded themselves not to forget where they came from and that all of this fame and fortune, it's not really real, right? It is now, but it's not really real. It's not going to last you for the rest of your life. Someday somebody else is going to be up here. So never forget where you came from, which is a lesson that a lot of people who find some success in this life could do well with kind of reflecting on, right? Because if you don't, start thinking you're somebody else, you start acting a different way, entitled and all that good stuff. But I thought it was well done, man. I enjoyed that. Next up at number nine, we got Shine from the Beautiful World album in 2006, their first one since the 1995 album, the first one without Robbie. Second single became their sixth consecutive number one single and their 10th number one overall, making them one of only seven acts in the history of UK charts to have more than nine number one songs. So let that sink in for a minute. It later emerged that Robbie was the subject of the track. And I wrote, I, I read a lot of stuff about this. I think that's that's a true statement, but you guys might tell me differently in the comments. But I, I've read a ton of stuff. I did a ton of research for this. Don't worry, I'm not sharing it all with you. I condensed it way down, but I just wanted to understand them better. It was written and released prior to his decision to return to the band. We vocals on this one are Mark Owen. and went on to win the British Single of the Year, 2008 Brit Awards. All right, we're two songs in. And I'll, I'll say this before I talk about Shine. You know, obviously what you would expect, good harmonies, right? Good call and response. Um, and, and this, you know, a, a good vocal performance on this too, on weed. But the the song, when you realize it's about Robbie and a lot of stuff he was going through at the time, his depression and, you know, substance stuff, uh, it really takes on a new uh, a new level, right? It's encouragement to him. Like, come on, you can do this and shine, shine. You know, like, it's, uh, it's just really well done. So a good pick for number nine. Next up at number eight from the Circus album, we have Set It All. Number nine in the UK, one in Scotland, written by Gary, Howard, Jason, and Mark, together with Steve Robson. It features Barlow and Owen on lead vocals. Now, you see it below, but we're actually going to watch a video for this one. Set it all. Just a wonderfully constructed song, right? The vocals are fantastic. Uh, the strings, just the arrangement. Like, it's just a, it's a really good song. And it's a heartbreaking song, right? Set it all. It's it's a much more mature song than you're going to get when they were, from when they were younger, I would guess. Um when the tears fall away and there's no conversation, there's nothing left to break that's not already been broken. You're staring into space and every inch of silence, been standing here for days and days. And then the chorus said it all, nothing to say at all, nothing to say that matters. Haven't we heard enough? Said it all, nothing to say at all, nothing to say that matters, doesn't matter anymore. I think if you lived long enough, you've been in one of these relationships, most likely, right? Where it's so painful to let it go because maybe you've been together for a while, you've invested a ton into it, you know, just emotionally, and it's just not going to work. And the frustration of it, like there's no way to make it work and you know it, but you don't want to let it go. And that's that's what I get out of this. You feel the emotion of it. So that was really, really good. Next up, number seven, we got Wooden Boat from the Beautiful World album in 2006. It's the last track from the album and Jason's first lead vocal. All right, Wooden Boat. I think the older you are, right, if you're an old guy like me, the more you get out of this song, right? Basically talking about how fast life moves and the life cycles you go through, right? You're just, you're a kid, then you... You get your license, you take the car because you're going to meet the girl, right? But then the girl doesn't show on you. Then you get married and it's a year later and you're waiting for the kid. And then at the end, his wife dies, man. What he wouldn't give to be on that wooden boat because he's all alone, man. It's a it's a sad song, right? It's a good song. It's a sad song. As I'm older and my, my daughter's a junior in high school and Trey, my partner in crime on this channel, doesn't live here anymore. And it won't be long probably and she won't live here anymore. And it's going to be a weird part of life, right? It's like, wow, okay. One of my big purposes is 
is being a father. And that doesn't end, but it does change when your kids get out of the house. It's like, what do you do with yourself then? So life cycle songs like this, they hit me pretty well. So good choice. Next up, we have The Flood. From that Progress album in 2010, lead single, first to feature Robbie since his return to the band in July of 2010. Featured both Robbie and Gary on lead vocals. Somehow... It only went to number two in the UK. All right, The Flood, obviously very well produced. The longer it went on, the more I liked it. And, you know, it's about them, right? The Flood, the, what they went through when they were younger, right? Because, of course, although no one understood, we were holding back The Flood, learning, learning how to dance the rain. We were holding back The Flood. They said we'd never dance again. And, and I found a little bit about this. Like, I, I didn't, like, this is, this is crazy to me. Um, their fans' passion in the 90s could rival Beatlemania. In fact, when they broke up in 1996, British government had to set up suicide lines because of how upset fans were. And journalists could be just as distressing. So they had to learn how to deal with that as well as other changes in their lives that came with fame. Robbie commented at this time when the song was out. He said, The first time around, although it was precarious and unsafe within the band, there was still a safety in the, in the numbers against this pandemonium and hysteria that we faced everywhere we went. From our fans to journalists to our friends becoming used to us being famous to our parents being used to us being famous. The only safe place really was us five together. And even that was unsafe. The flood for me was the outside forces trying to break the dam. And we were the dam. You know, we, Trey and I talked about this. We've done all the Beatles stuff. We have like 70 Beatles videos up, like literally 70. Um, you know, no one can understand what you're going through in that moment, except for the other people that are going through it. So there is strength in numbers in the band. I think when you're a solo artist, it's just so much more of a just grind on you, like an Elvis, right? Stuff just gets weird because like that level of fame for you to shoulder on your own with no one else in the world being able to relate to it is really difficult. So I thought this was really well done and some, some wise words there. Now we're going to dial it way, way back to a million love songs from Take That and Party, 1992. Their debut was number seven in the UK. It was written by Gary when he was 15. Let's go. All right, a million love songs. So... If you're in the UK and you were around when this came out, I'm sure this brings back great memories. For me, it's more the typical boy band sound, which I hadn't really heard on here. So it's probably my least favorite song on first listen. I will say Gary played the piano on this, right? And singing lead vocals. And then the saxophone in there's nice. So it's not a traditional total boy band thing, but it definitely has that sound from the night. It's of its time, right? And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Next up at number four, we got The Garden from the Circus album in 2008. Third single, I went to 97 in the UK. I couldn't figure out why. I couldn't find why. Mark Owen originally intended to sing the song's bridge during its ride and recording, but was surprised and impressed when Howard Donald sang it instead, which was kept in the final recording. And we're actually going to watch a video on this one. All right, The Garden. And it says I was at Abbey Road, so the previous one was too. They just didn't say that. I thought that song was really well done as well. Um, mature subject matter, right, of look. Basically, once again, this life is short. Right. Almost like the wooden boat from a different perspective of you with your the girl that you love is what I'm taking here. You know, look like this is going to go fast. And so we need to enjoy it. This is the life that you're living. You know, like, let's let's enjoy this. Let's push into it and, and be happy and live life to the fullest. So yeah, really well done. Next up, we'll rewind it two years to the Beautiful World album in 2006. We got Patience, the lead single peaked at the top of the UK singles chart. Also topped the charts in Germany, Spain, Switzerland. Went top 10 in Denmark, Ireland, Italy, Austria, and Sweden. Won the best British single award of the 2007 Brit Awards. and was voted the record of the year for 2006. In 2009, Nicky Wire, the Manic Street Preachers, who I enjoy them tremendously, hailed this as the greatest comeback single in history. He said if Neil Young had written it, people would be calling it a masterpiece. I just like that quote. I thought that was high praise, man. Powerful vocals, really well done. Wonderfully produced with the strings and everything. It kind of has everything in it. The sentiment of the song, also really well done, really well written. Um, as, as Richard said at the start, Gary can write. Um, you know, just talking about he's coming out of a broken relationship. And so the person that he's talking to, they want to be his salvation, as he mentions it later on in the song. But right now he's still hurting. So he just wants them to hold him, let him get through this. He, he's going to let this person in, he basically tells him, but it's going to take time, right? And sometimes people want you to flip that switch, man. We all got emotional scars from one thing or another, right? And they heal in their own timeline, and there's not sometimes a lot we can do about that. Sometimes we can, but sometimes there isn't. So, well done. All right, got our top two. After you got Rule the World from the Beautiful World album in 2006, we are going to listen to the radio edit on this. It was recorded for the soundtrack of the film Stardust in 2007, and then included on the deluxe edition of Beautiful World, so it's not on the regular one. Went to two in the UK and went on to become the group's second 
best selling single. Gary Barlow on lead vocals on this one. Rule the world. Songwriting wise, very simple compared to a lot of these other ones. It's a lot of repeating and chorus. So basically, we'll go with me, girl, and, and you know, we're going to rule the world. I'll just, I'll just break it down now. Really well done. Really good harmonies. Very catchy. I can see why it's, uh, why it's so popular. Now we come to number one. Back for Good. We're doing the radio mix from the Nobody Else album in 1995. This is a song that I wonder if I know. It topped the UK singles chart. We're also charting at number one in 31 countries, as well as reaching the top 10 in many others, including the US, making it their only hit in that country. At the 1996 Brit Awards, it won the Brit Award for British Single of the Year. In 2003, Q Magazine ranked the song at number 910 in their list of the 1,001 best songs ever. And in a UK poll in 2012, it was voted number 11 on the ITV special of the nation's favorite number one single. Gary claims he wrote the song in 15 minutes. It's their biggest selling single and the biggest selling boy band single ever in the UK. In 2018, it was ranked 11th by the Billboard critics in their compilation of the 100 greatest boy band songs of all time. And in 2020, Rolling Stone ranked the song number 15 in their list of 75 greatest boy band songs of all time. And Gary said that there are 89 versions of this song recorded by other artists. I followed music all my life. There's a period in the 90s where I fell out of like popular music here in the US a little bit. I, the grunge wore on me a little bit. And, uh, you know, Trey was just born and, you know, you starting your career. So that's why I wonder even if this is a top 10 hit about any other time in music history up until then, I would definitely know it. But I'm wondering if I know this one. Okay, back for good. I did know that song, but, you know, I didn't know it greatly. It's one of those songs where the first verse comes on and you know, the arrangement, you're like, yeah, I think so. And then when he got to the chorus, I knew it. Um, I didn't know it greatly, but I did. I did know it. And I started thinking about it as the song was going on. So like, this is 1995 and it went to seven in the U.S., right? And then they break up. So maybe then broke up, I bet, and made another couple albums. They might have broke through and made it to the U.S. So I bet that had to be an even greater source of frustration with some within the band. Once they broke up, they started thinking about that. They could have taken over the U.S., which I know a lot of people uh, across the pond, as we like to say, uh, that's always one of their goals. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's a good song. I mean, it's a good song. It's got that 90s boy band sound, but it's 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 really well done. Uh, she left and he's still hanging on to it. Now, I think he he probably wanted her to leave, but now he figures out, you know, the grass isn't greener on the other side, so to speak. And it's probably about time for her to come back for good. But he, uh, he lets us know in the first verse that he doesn't really believe that's probably going to happen. But a good way to finish off. This top 10 is back for good. Number one on Richard's top 10. Take that list. All right, now we're going to get to my favorite tracks. Honorable mention, The Wooden Boat, The Flood, The Garden, and Back for Good. My faves were Set It All and Patience. I think my age, guys, is really going to give away some of my favorite. I thought the song writing on some of these was really good. I really resonated with it. But overall, I'm going to tell you, we'll go into this. I knew Take That was a boy band. I mean, Richard mentioned it at the start. And I'm thinking in my head, like, yeah, we'll see how this is. But I knew they were huge when I did all this research. Guys, I dug into hours of research for this. I just didn't bore you all with it. Because if you're watching this, you probably know all that. And I'm just trying to catch up. And I probably caught up to one one hundredth of what you know. But I did my best because it did interest me greatly. And like I said, I love Robbie Williams. and don't understand why he never made it big here in the U.S. It's a big loss, uh, in my opinion. But anyway, I digress. But uh, all that to say, I was super impressed with Take That. This is really good stuff, man. Really good stuff. Shows you can't you can't judge things before you go into them. I know that from doing this channel for so long. But let me know, and I'm sure many of you are going to have your own top 10 list. Let me know what they are below. And remember, trying to put together a top 10 list is incredibly difficult. There can only be 10. So throw Richard some love, guys. And if you haven't already, please give this a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. we got over 2,500 videos. We're about to celebrate as I'm filming this tomorrow, our fifth anniversary of this channel. It doesn't seem possible. All right, guys. Until next time, I will see you.